My straight walk family, it is time for me to bid you a very pleasant night wherever you are in the universe and in particular wherever you are here in St. Kitts and Nevis, our born in land. And wherever you are in the entire Caribbean, my straight dog family, I say good night to you. And welcome to another edition of Street Talk. To my Kittishan and Nivijan diaspora throughout the world, wherever you are, I'm at liberty to say good night. I can say good morning and I will say good afternoon because one of such greetings will be applicable to the region you've, in which you now find yourself. Some of you are in Asia. There's some of you in Africa, there's some of you in Europe, and there are a whole a lot of you all over North America. So, my straight dog family, wherever you are, I say greetings and welcome to another edition of Straight Talk. There are those of you who may have joined me for the first time, <coughs> and I welcome you and hope and trust that it will not be your last time but just to inform you that straight talk is a public service program that facilitates and promotes free expression on all issues of national interest be they legal be they environmental be they technological social economic and or political issues on straight talk you do have a forum to express yourselves freely. Let us try, try our utmost best to try to, to get back St. Kitts as one of the freest countries in the entire world because we seem to have lost that status, especially in the most recent times. My Shredok family, it's a program on which we try to raise the level of national consciousness. We try to raise the level of national discourse by alerting our people to their rights, to their responsibilities, and certainly to their obligations. My name is Ian Patches Lybird, and I give Almighty God thanks for blessing me with yet another opportunity uh, to join you in conversation on yet another occasion. And we are still not joined by WinFM, but we know some of the reasons we can all say why. Nonetheless, tell your friend, to tell your neighbor, to tell your family, and you spread the feed on Facebook and or YouTube. I haven't been following the obituaries, and I know there are quite a lot of our family, friends, or friends, or family of our friends who have gone to the great beyond. But, so we want to convey our 
condolences on behalf of these families, on our behalf, brother, to these families, and we trust and hope they would be strong, understanding that death is a process. We normally as well have our observations in review. And just to inform you that my thesis tonight is titled or entitled, I Support Governance Bills and Ethical Standards. And we'll get to that in a moment. But now is the time when we just highlight our the issues of the past, some issues we may have raised, and we do some reflection, then we ask some questions, such as what was accomplished, how has it helped others, and what has changed since our discussion on such issues, how it has helped others, and what can be expected next? Also, what new we have learned as a people. And my straight dog family, our first observation we are following tonight and uh, relates to a news item, news item rather, we all heard, I'm sure, on ZZ television about a shooting incident or accident in my hometown, Newtown. And Mervyn Thompson reported this uh, just a few days ago. refreshments. Enjoy the cricket with Angostura Chill. Angostura Chill, the official refreshment partner of the Hero CPL T20. It's the Quartz Optical Annual Frame Event. Get up to 85%. Okay, we seem to have a little mix-up by Street Dog family. But there was a shooting incident in the Newtown area, which we are following and we will keep you updated on that particular news item, which, as I said, it was reported by ZIZ News, but we seem to have had a mix-up. I do apologize uh, for that, but Straight Talk will uh, keep you posted. Our second observation uh, relates to the injunction uh, to prevent the deportation of some 14 Haitians, I think the total was. And that injunction has found some level of success to date. And the High Court will now consider the application for asylum. Young attorney at law, Craig Tuckett, from Newtown, is leading this human, humanitarian effort to help the or help our CARICOM brothers and sisters uh, to, as I said, seek asylum here in St. Kitts. There's lots of different views, pro and con, as it relates to the our Haitian brothers and sisters. But Straight Talk will continue to closely follow that case and be just trust and hope that the humanitarian minds would take the forefront. Our other observation is that relates to the Ministry of Health. And while the Minister of Health is quite busy posing and taking pictures at uh, potential sites, my straight dog family for the construction of the new Joseph N. France General Hospital. The health sector uh, is reportedly in chaos. 
as management systems at the Joseph N. France and Pogson hospitals in particular seem to have failed my straight dog family. And that's a concern and ought to be a concern for all of us, my straight dog family. I recall a very good friend of mine uh, got a hip, a hip injury and was just lying basically helpless at the JNF for some three weeks. It seemed as if she was just left there to die. Unfortunately, that young woman has family in the United States and fortunately, underline fortunately, uh, got out, I'm, on, I'm told, on a commercial flight, got to the United States of America and believe it or not, in two days, got a hip replacement and that patient is up and about. Had she stayed in St. Kitts, one wonders what would have been her faith today. But the management systems at the Joseph N. France and the Parks and Hots hospitals seem to have failed. And Straight Talk received a press release from the Ministry of Health, uh, which states, and I quote, the leadership of the Ministry of Health is committed to improving healthcare delivery in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. A number of inherited issues have been identified that require immediate action. The ministry has been em empathetic and accommodating in its response to these issues and will not allow the positive changes that have been made over the last six months to be diminished. Stabilization and transformation must take place simultaneously. So changes must and will take place to ensure better health care and better outcomes for our patients, said the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Sharon Archibald. The Ministry would like the general public to know that both emergency rooms at the Joseph N. France General Hospital and the Parkson Medical Center in Sandy Point are covered 24-7 by doctors alongside the nurses. But I want the doctors and I want us rather to convey and extend to the doctors and the nurses and other hospital staff as I believe they all deserve our kudos. I'm sure we all remember the thankless job they all performed for nigh two years and more during COVID-19. It appears, however, it just appears that they are not motivated at this time to work beyond the call of duty as they did before. So the big question is, why not now? And the Minister of Health is our Prime Minister, Dr. Terence Drew. And I made mention before, the last time a medical doctor held a portfolio of health, or the health portfolio, the hospital went downhill. We call Dr. Asim or Earl Asim Martin. Now we have Dr. Terence Drew. And both, incidentally, have studied in Cuba. I am not saying that they both have attained the same results because they always will be greater and or lesser. But why not now is the question we ask. And these are my observations in review for tonight, my straight dog family. And we're following many other stories as well. And we will keep you posted as our programs continue 
over the next nights and weeks to come. But as I mentioned earlier, my thesis tonight, I've captioned, I support governance bills and ethical standards. And I say so from the standpoint as one having served in the public sector for nigh 25 years after being groomed in the private sector for nigh 15 years before that I am fully aware that the public sector is an essential part of every economy. Governments spend large sums of public money each fiscal year on a range of services and infrastructure for their citizens. Decisions made by governments today will impact generations to come and will have implications for future policy, tax, and spending decisions. Now, the basic social contract between governments and citizens is continually or continuously changing. And therefore, there is a heightened need for transparency and accountability to help our citizens understand how public funds are being managed and spent, how decisions are made and why, and the evidence and information to support such decisions. Now to manage public resources effectively and efficiently, Governments need strong governance and a robust public financial management system so that the use of resources are tracked and that resources are appropriately allocated against public policy objectives. Governments must endeavor to achieve the most with the resources they have maximizing efficiencies in public service delivery while minimizing loss through waste, through fraud, or through corruption. Governments today face numerous competing priorities and require reliable financial and non-financial information to make informed and hopefully data-driven decisions on priority areas of spending and investment. My Street Dog family, to enhance government's accountability for decision-making high levels, high levels of transparency are required. Having said all of the foregoing, I must therefore place on record my full support for the governance bills recently passed in the National Assembly and the embattled Attorney General Garth Lucian Wilkin called it a momentous occasion or a momentous day. Mr. Speaker, this is a momentous day for our Federation. Today, on the first day of Lent, in this hallowed hall, the men and women on this side of the floor are fulfilling their undertaking to our people and the wider global community to implement a fundamental change in the way government does business in our federation. It therefore gives me great joy and pride to be given the opportunity by my elected friends and colleagues to declare loudly and clearly for all to share petitions, divisions, home and abroad Good governance is finally here. Transparency and accountability are finally becoming a part of our societal and political DNA. 
I must hasten to add, though, and I'll repeat, I place on record my full support for the governance bills recently passed in the St. Kitts Nevis National Assembly. But I will hasten to add that I fully support as well documented and agreed to ethical standards. And when I say ethical standards, I refer to standards that are based on human principles of right and wrong. We must call right, right, and we must call wrong, wrong. I'm aware, however, that ethical standards do not necessarily have a legal basis, while legal standards are based strictly on what is written in law. But it's the cultural norms that are the standards we are expected to live by. There are the shared expectations and rules that guide the behavior of people within groups, social groups and other groups. There's a close link, my street dog family, a close nexus between law and culture. And I submit that if we want to make a lasting change in our federation, we need to focus on cultural change. The culture I speak about is a set of shared beliefs, values, and norms that determine how we as a people behave, especially when we interact with one another. In 1964, when Martin Luther King Jr. was asked whether he would wait until the culture was ready for civil rights legislation, his response was very instructive. He said, and I quote, even though morality cannot be legislated, behavior can be Regulated. While the law cannot change the heart, he continued, it can certainly restrain the heartless. It may be true you can't legislate integration, but you can certainly legislate desegregation. And I think, he continued, that desegregation is a necessary first step to bring about an integrated society. Martin Luther King Jr. concluded, a change in behavior must be the first step. A change in attitudes will follow. In our society, we are accustomed to the law bolstering what is right and moral that we assume that something is moral just because it is legal. The rule of law requires that the executive is subordinate to the legislature, and it is the job of the courts to remind the government of that, which no doubt inconvenient, which is a no, which no doubt is an inconvenient constitutional fact. The recent decision of the Eastern Caribbean High Court in the case of the Attorney General Garth Lucien Wilkin versus yours truly, IPL, reminds us that the rule of law is not some technical legal requirement that can be ignored by powerful demagogues. They cannot be ignored by political leaders who seek support by appealing to the desires and prejudices of ordinary people rather by using rational argument. But by a complex living culture sustained by many different actors, 
internalizing a strong sense of their responsibility to uphold it. It only demonstrates the robustness of the OECS's rule of law institution, and I refer to the decision I referred to earlier. It demonstrates the robustness of the OECS's court or rule of law institutions, as I said, and the independence of the judiciary. The rule of law, in other words, is a living and breathing culture, a habit and state of mind embodied, exemplified by public participation in our national life. As such, it is a precious thing which must be cared for and rejuvenated by every generation. My straight dog family, from all historical accounts, following the demise of our first national hero, His Excellency Sir Robert Llewellyn Bradshaw, the rule of law was uprooted by short-sighted successor governments that set it aside for political advantage or political expediency. And I'm sure you agree, because with what's happening today, I hear many of you saying, if Robert Bradshaw was here, he'd have done A, B, or C. And this is my fundamental point. Democracy breaks down when public officials do not respect the law. And that is why the question looms large as to whether our Attorney General Garth Lucien Wilkin has the moral compass to guide, to guide us, beg your pardon, in areas of good governance, transparency, and accountability. He was castigated by the high court judge and instead of apologizing instead of apologizing my straight dog family he makes excuses like this one and i take full responsibility for payment of social security contributions in batches and not always on time there was a personal administrative inefficiency that led to the delayed payments and when i really realized i paid them I want you to listen to that again carefully, my street dog family. I will replay it. And I want you to listen carefully and come to your conclusion. Listen again. And I take full responsibility for payment of social security contributions in batches and not always on time. There was a personal administrative inefficiency that led to the delayed payments. And when I really realized, I paid them. He paid in batches. Personal inefficiencies, he said, he encountered. My straight talk family, no intention whatsoever to apologize for breaking the law that he's required to uphold. No intention whatsoever my straight dog family, personal administrative inefficiencies. That's what he said. And my straight dog family, he said he paid in batches. And let us examine that statement. Because between November 2020 and January 2023, 26 months. And yes, he paid in three batches. Batch one. He paid November 2020 to March 2021 on April 2021. And listen to this. He paid on April 2021 for November, from November 2020 to March 2021 on April 21 after 
he was elected president of the St. Kitts Nevis Bar Association on March or in March. Elections for the St. Kitts Nevis Bar Association were conducted on the Wednesday, the 31st of March, 2021. During the association's annual general meeting, the elections resulted in a new president, Mr. Garth Wilkin, being elected to lead the association. Mr. Garth Lucien Wilkin, the newly elected president, stated, and I quote, the bar intends to play an active role in promoting the administration of justice and the rule of law in St. Kitts and Nevis. He continued, during the upcoming term of the new law council, the public will hear from us regularly on matters of national importance and will feel the effect of the bar's advocacy, mostly behind the scenes, on matters which impact all nationals and residents. Our statutory duties will continue to remain high on the agenda as we seek to uphold the highest standards of practice, conduct, and proficiency of the legal profession in St. Kitts and Nevis. Assist the public in all matters relating to attorneys at law and maintain the honor and independence of the bar in its relations with the judiciary and the executive. We look forward to support our members and the public in achieving those and our many other goals. Unquote. And that was the president back then in April 2021 when he was elected on March, after he was elected, beg your pardon, on March 31st, 2021. Then he paid his arrears, or his outstanding social security bills. That was his first batch. He said he paid in batches. And yes, his second batch. His second batch he paid for 50 months. One five. 50 months from May 2021 to August 2022. The day before he was sworn in as Attorney General and Minister of Justice and Legal Affairs over there in Warner Park, my street dog family. 50 months he paid, having been sworn in then as Attorney General and Minister with responsibility for I, Garth Lucien Wilkin, I, Garth Lucien Wilkin, do swear, do swear, that I will honor, uphold, and preserve, that I will honor, uphold, and preserve the Constitution of St. Christopher and Nevis, the Constitution of St. Christopher and Nevis, and the law, and the law. So help me God. So help me God. That was August 13, 2022. The day after, he paid his second batch of outstanding amounts owed to the Social Security Board. He held a Bible in his hand and swore before God the entire Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis and the world to uphold the Constitution and the law. But he failed us. This takes us to batch three. Yes, he said he paid in batches. He paid in batches. His last batch of payments covered four months from September to December 2022. And he paid for that batch, his third batch, in January 2023, after being appointed Attorney General. He broke the law. And we may ask, what forced him to pay that batch? 
is still unknown to straight up. So I asked the question, how can we forgive the Attorney General Garth Lucian Wilkin? Give him a pass when he continues to be economic with the truth. Yes, he continues to be, be economic with the truth. And he comes before us to tell us, yes, not to apologize, but to tell us he's accustomed to be paying in batches. And he paid in batches. Yes, he did pay in batches, three batches. Those are not my words. These are his words, my street dog family. And I take full responsibility for payment of social security contributions in batches and not always on time. There was a personal administrative inefficiency that led to the delayed payments. And when I really realized, I paid them. A personal administration inefficiency led to him paying in three batches. From November 2020 to April 2021. Just after he was elected president of the St. Kitts Nevis Bar Association. His first batch. His second batch from May 2021 to August 2022. He paid for 50 months, his second batch. One day or the day before he was sworn in as the Attorney General and Minister, Minister of Justice and Legal Affairs. And his third batch, he paid after he was sworn in as Attorney General and Minister of Justice and Legal Affairs. Then he comes to ask us. Or he does not even come to apologize. He comes and he speaks about some personal administrative inefficiency, whatever the hell that means. In the sworn affidavit, my street dog family, that he filed with the High Court on January 12, 2022. He filed his sworn affidavit on January 12, 2022. This is the affidavit. And he wrote on the oath, my straight dog family, I, Garth Lucian Wilkin, of all moons in the parish of St. George in the island of St. Christopher, being duly sworn, make oath and say as follows. I am over the age of 18 and understand the obligations of an oath. I am the Attorney General and Federal Minister of Justice and Legal Affairs of St. Christopher and Nevis, having been so appointed on August 13, 2022. I am an attorney at law, licensed to practice in St. Kitts and Nevis, Antigua and Barbuda, Montserrat and Anguilla. Prior to becoming Attorney General and a Minister, I was the President of the St. Kitts and Nevis Bar Association from 2021 to 2022. I have an unblemished disciplinary record in my chosen profession of law. And prior to being appointed Attorney General and a Minister, I was a partner in the prestigious law firm of Kelsey, Wilkin, and Ferdinand. Unquote. That's from his sworn, an excerpt from his sworn affidavit. But furthermore, my sweet dog family, there is a document that is part of the Lex Monday Guides to Doing Business series, which provides general information about legal and business infrastructures in jurisdictions around the world. 
The complete series can be viewed at www.lexmonday.com Guides to Doing Business. That's www. You can research it yourself. L-E-X-M-U-N-D-I dot com slash guides to doing business. Now, Lex Monday is the world's leading network of independent law firms with in-depth experience in over 100 countries. Through close collaboration, its member firms are able to offer their clients preferred access to more than 21,000 lawyers worldwide, a global resource of unmatched breadth and depth. Senkis Davis' guide was prepared by Lex Monday member firm, Kelsey, Wilkin, and Ferdinand, and said this about our social security system. I've only found the, 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 the preparation from all April, 12, April 2018, beg your pardon. And he said this, interestingly, about our social security system. On page 37, you will read, the social security system provides pension benefits for eligible contributors as well as sickness and maternity leave benefits and limited funeral expenses. Rates of contribution are 5% by the employer and 5% by the employee, up to a threshold of 6,500 of gross monthly earnings. Employee contributions and gross earnings are deducted by the employer, and listen to this, and paid monthly with employer's contribution and other payroll taxes described above. Contributions cease to apply when an employee reaches the age of 62 years. And that's an excerpt coming from the Lex Monday document, which is a guide to doing business in St. Kitts, prepared by its member here in St. Kitts. My sweet dog family, the 45th anniversary of the Social Security Fund is still being celebrated under the theme Transform, Reform, Thrive, Social Security 45. The Minister for Social Security said he supports his Attorney General. Ironically, Consultant Walter Gardner, Gardner, who was retained by the Social Security Board, told his trainees about the secret to social security success. And this is what he said. Uh, good morning. My name is Walter Gardner. I'm a consultant, uh, project manager for the Turks and Caicos Islands Social Security Scheme. I'm here in the beautiful island of St. Kitts and Nevis, conducting some training for the compliance and inspectorate department. So I'm here for two weeks. The secret to Social Security success is that we all contribute. Everyone contributes in a timely manner in order for Social Security to be sustainable. All employers ensure that you pay the contributions for your employees on time because not to do so is a criminal offense. And that's coming from consultant Walter Gardner, was retained by the Social Security Board, who told his trainees of the compliance department, you heard him for yourself, not to pay on time is a crime. But ironically as well, in the presence of the minister with responsibility for Social Security and the Prime Minister, the actuary, Derek Osborne, warned that compliance makes or informed that compliance makes the social security system work. He said this. Probably more importantly, I think, is the fact that 
We need to find a way to ensure that people who are supposed to pay only get a business license renewed or only get to drive taxi or get to be a doctor or lawyer in the private sector if they're compliant with social security. Only get to drive taxi. Right? Checks and balances in place. If you don't pay on the right hand, you can't practice on the left hand. Right? It happens in the US, it happens in Canada, it happens all over the international all over the, the big countries. We need to find a way in the Caribbean to let the, the system speak to one another and let's make sure that, that everybody's compliant to make the system better. My sweet dog family, the Attorney General obviously enjoys a privilege unlike those 54 persons, unlike those 54 persons, the Attorney General, as I said, obviously <clears throat> enjoys a privilege unlike those 54 persons who are now presently before the court, who have been taken to the court by the Social Security Board. The question before us, therefore, is there a special right or advantage or immunity granted or available only to the Attorney General and Minister of Justice and Legal Affairs? I have therefore communicated with the St. Kitts Nevis Bar Association to seek guidance on the correct procedure that should be followed given the importance of these matters to the law profession and the public at large. As most of these offenses occurred when the Attorney General was in fact the President of the St. Kitts Nevis Bar Association. I would have thought that the Bar Association itself would have considered what actions are appropriate given the decision of the court. But if any action is dependent upon a member of the bar or a private citizen, and it is in this context I have solicited the guidance of the Bar Association. Good governance in the public sector, my straight dog family, is fundamental to ensuring that public sector entities and officials achieve their intended outcomes while always acting in the best public interest. Public sector spending can be susceptible to waste, fraud, and corruption. And it's for those reasons I reiterate whether it is the integrity in public life, freedom of information, or anti-corruption legislation, I support. I, Ian Patches Libel, support the safe passage and implementation of them all, as I support governance bills and ethical standards. That's my story tonight, my straight dog family, and I am not going to change it. It's nine before the nine o'clock hour. I'll open the lines. I'll entertain your calls and your emails. If you're so minded to call, remember the numbers are 869-663-6672 or 646-829-6672. I must remind you as well that these numbers have access or WhatsApp access as well. I always like to implore you though, before I do open the lines, I'll do so in a couple of seconds. My phones were just going earlier, so you can now call me, uh, my straight dog family. Uh, before I want to implore you to respect others, and of course to achieve that, you must first respect yourselves. Let us try to be fair to all concern. Let us try to build goodwill and better friendships. Let us ensure that the things we say and or do will be beneficial to all concerned. And in saying and doing those things, let's strive 
to build a kinder, gentler St. Kitts and Nevis. At 8 before 9, call her, you are live. Good evening, Patches. Good evening, sir. I've been listening for the past week speaking about social security. My God, let me ask a question, Patches. You had a politician running Sally Point who owes social security $300,000. You know about that? Well, if Hello, any, any, yeah, I'll answer you. Any, anyone who, who owes the social security or doesn't pay according to the law uh, has committed a criminal offense. Good. So when you bring Pistachios to us, as you just said, he had committed a, 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 an offense, right? So why Timothy Harris did not lock him up? Why you didn't back in that he should be arrested and locked up and not run for unity? Well, I, I, I'm not aware that he was in public office, uh, whoever he, this gentleman oh, is. No, no, I didn't say he was in public office. Yeah, but, you know yeah, yeah, but uh, be me out, be me out. No, 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 be me out, yeah. be me out. Let's, let's have a rational discussion. Uh, yeah. The Attorney General, Garth Lucian Wilkin, is, in fact, in public office. He is the sitting Attorney General. And the decision of the court was not made by me. It was Justice... Uh, Justice Tamara Gill, her ladyship Tamara Gill. No, 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 you'll have your say, you'll have, you'll have your time to talk, don't worry, I'll give you a time to talk. Uh, in section 70, 37 of the judgment, she said, a social security payment after the time prescribed by the legislation constitutes a criminal offense whether or not the law is strictly enforced. So whoever it is, whoever it is, uh, they have committed offense, an offense. So they have committed an offense and or and as well as they said in the Attorney General. So what's your point? What I'm saying to you, Patrick, this is again. You saying that the Attorney General committed an offense. Okay? Do you believe so? Did, he, did I believe that he committed an offense? Yes. Let me ask a question before I answer you. Did you believe you committed an offense when you beat international airport security rules? No, I did not. You did not? No. Patches. Patches. You ain't got kids in no food. No, 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 don't mix issues. You know. No, no, but don't mix issues. Let's deal one thing at a time. Patches, hear what I'm saying. We didn't call the issues. I'm saying to you, I cannot stand here and tell you that the Attorney General committed an offense. Because, because one, did the social security take him to court? But he's, he's probably a privileged guy. Okay. Now, let me ask a question again. Did the social security was going to take this pastor to court? I, 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 I don't know. That is, you know. I, okay. I, 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 let I me ask know. another question, Patrick. Let me ask another question. Mark Bradley said he has the report for you mm. from an airport breach. He went in cabinet. Mm. Did you commit an offense when Mark said there was a report on you at the airport breach? Well, you asked that question already. I'll, I'll, let me ask you again, right? The question of, of uh, committing or breaching security at the airport or the the, the, the accusation rather right let's let's I listen to you so listen to me right yeah, but I'm saying the, the video is here but, yeah, but, the video, yeah. but the video will the video show you the video will, will, yes, will show you you can play it a thousand times the, mm -hmm. video, the video shows you that I have my my security ID on my chest okay. and I went Patches. through I went through I went through the 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 security as required. Patches and ask a question. But let's, no. let's not it's let's not I I but be, 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 me. Out, be, be me out be me out please be yeah. me out be me out please we are not going to change the issues tonight. No, no, no. We are talking. No, 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 no. No, no, please, no, 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 please, 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 please. Let us have a good discussion. The topic so tonight. My, my thesis tonight. That is, that my thesis is. tonight. Uh, this, wait, wait, wait. The destination had on your ID, and you were being escorted, Patches. You cannot be escorted and leave. I did, the way. I didn't. I did, that's not. I did, I did not say that. But I'm saying to you now. Here's what I'm saying to you. I am tolerating your discussion, but the issue and the topic tonight is I support 
governance, governance bills and ethical standards. What is your contribution to that? Do you have any contribution? My to contribution to that is all we say about ethical bill. We had a leader who went to London to choose and watch. You breach international airport security rules, which is not the fact. You was being escorted and you breach protocol. Anything else? Woman, you understand what I'm saying? So I'm trying to come and no, 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 anything. Well, okay. Anything else? Well, I have to say, I'm saying you are being patches. But I'm going to go to the jail, you know. We'll never play with that. You have a good night, brother. Have a good night, my brother. Uh, Obviously, uh, you don't understand uh, airport security, so you'll try to spin anything. If Mark Bradley has a report, just release it to the public. Let the public see what's in the report, my sweet dog family. But the fact is, the attorney general said he paid in three batches. These are not my words, so we're not going to di digress tonight. I allowed you to digress, but that's fine. That's what street dog is all about. The attorney general said this. And I take full responsibility for payment of social security contributions in batches and not always on time. There was a personal administrative inefficiency that led to the delayed payments. And when I really realized, I paid them. Okay. Personal administrative inefficiency. And he paid them. But he broke the law. That is the question, my street dog family. The lies are open, my street dog family. Uh, I allowed that call out to digress a bit just now, but uh, that's part of street talk. You know, we entertain everyone, and you know, some will prefer to 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 digress, and others don't. But this email reads: "The new room, the new roommate, beg your pardon, in the glass house, only talking out of one side of his mouth." giving the impression that he is defending the Attorney General. But we all know that he does not have anything good to say about his, that family. For, furthermore, he is glad to have the company of the AG, uh, the company of the AG in the set boat with him when he broke the law and all prison rules by taking prisoners from the prison to the Marriott to dine. Read that email. Uh, caller, I want to thank you for holding your life. You're welcome. My name is Jay. My name is Jay Smith. Good evening, Mr. Patches. Good evening. You said Jason, you said? Jay Smith. Jay oh, Smith. Oh, yeah, Jay. Jay. Just call me Jay. Oh, Jay. How are you doing, Jay? I'm great. I'm great. Thanks for asking. Um, so I, I actually was calling, not to go off topic, um, just looking for some recommendations. Because I'm having some issues back home finding um some some legal counsel, so I wanted to know if you had any recommendations um to help us um get legal counsel. Because we have some document, my family obtained some documents from the courthouse in Nevis, um, and we see some discre discrepancies in these documents, and um we we would just like to address those in the court, but we we're not able to get legal counsel, so I'm calling to you know get a recommendation from you, Mr. Patches. Uh, Jay, I would, I would not hesitate to give you the recommendation, but I'll prefer not to do it uh, online. Uh, if, you can oh, okay. contact, if you can contact me, the, there's an email address for the program here, uh, Straight Talk, okay. S-T-R-A-I-G-H-T-T-A-L-K, okay. patches at gmail.com. Oh, okay. You've got that? Yes, I have it. I have it. And, and I'll, I'll song, send you an email along with all it's on, it's on the side. You see it on the side there, right? Okay. Yeah, I see it on the And I'm yes. going to attach some documents as well so you can see for yourself. Um, but it, it's, 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 it's regarding to the Bath Plains and the Bath Hotel in Nevis. Um, those are properties under my great-grandfather's company, the Leewood Island Development Company Limited. And I have the documents right here. And um, it, it does an LLC. So um, okay. we're just wondering how how, you know, other um, well, parties I'll, I'll, I'll obtained you, it. I'll send you a, a, a short list of uh, three or four four law firms and uh, your, your choice. But I'll, I'll, if you send me that information, I'll, 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 re, I'll make the recommendation to you. Or I'll send you okay. a list of... Okay. Of, 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 yeah, okay? 
Okay, and I like. I also like to before I, uh, we go offline. I I also have another document um for the certificate certificate of title. Um, I have one that says it goes over to my grandfather from um Ramez Kawaja, and then I have um this is a, this is regarding to another property, and then I have uh, the same document and it's changed in the same day. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna send these documents as well. Okay. Um, it's changed. They they're changing over to different LLCs and. So I just need someone to look into this, and it, it it needs to be investigated. So if you could assist me with that, that'd be a great, that'd be great, Mr. Patches. I will try my utmost best, uh, RJ. Okay. 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 And I I I I'll reach out to you um via email. Yes. Yes. I'm making making we we'll, we'll, we'll connect this. So. Okay. I'll be to hear from you, Mr. Patches. Have a great night. Have a great night as well. I look forward to your communication. Uh, yes, that's. Thank you very much. That's what Straight Talk is all about. We cover lots of different uh, topics at the time, and we. It's a public service program, like we said. Uh, caller, you're live. Hello, caller. Patrick, let me ask you a question. The houses of NH where you build and the corner, the corner, was it built for free? Uh, was it built before we get them for free? Mr. Curtis Cook, right? Uh, you no, I mean, I'm not in the world. Let me make it clear to you only. Nobody calls you a station disrespect me, or when I'm coming back. You want to hold on to that? Can't be the kind of name right now. That's what I'm actually saying. You, you didn't want nobody to know your name? I said, no, no, no. I said, you could call me name. Nobody okay. calling your program and disrespect because I'm for your back. I want your earnings. We, we so don't can't show you the You don't need to pass any threats on the program because uh, we don't. Well, my back, no check. Yeah. I'm uh, not but, passing a check. I'm just saying. Let us, be, let us be respectful. I was but, saying earlier in your father. Yeah, but uh, let's... let's would have been for free? Yeah, but you don't have Where to tell me something. You don't have to tell me anything uh, two times and three times, right? And let's, let's, just, let's, just, let's just establish a protocol here, right? And same like, thing on your life. Who worked it on your life? So make sure you establish all that. Let's just let's establish, let's a pro- let's establish a protocol here, right? On Straight Talk, everybody, including Curtis Crook, has a right to call, you call and, speak name, and speak. You right? can call me because you can identify me. I don't have a free. I'm, 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 I'm talking sorry. to call uh, you. Yeah, but, you know, in, but, but this, is, this is what I want to establish with, with us, right? We don't need to cross talk, right? And we don't need to argue, all right? I will listen to you. I'll expect you to grant me the same courtesy. The question, the question, question you ask about the NHC, the panel, question you ask about, let me, ask, let me answer you. people get them for free? And where's the document what was saying? Can you answer let, me, let me answer you. Let me answer you. I was yeah. never the minister with responsibility for the NHC. Never. My portfolio included public infrastructure, post, urban development, and transport. I never, for one moment, even acted as a minister with national security. Sorry, at NHC. There's a current minister, Jeffrey Hanley. He, I think he's in charge of NHC. So that question can be posted uh, 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 asked. Did you build them, Patrick? Who built them? Is not you. Who no, 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 them? I did not build them. That's what I'm saying. The, so you were responsible for building them? No, so I was not. No, I was not there at but I said no. Why you asked me this question three and four times? You keep saying that I'm back. It's why you were fully responsible. You were used to be here. Why, why you waste your thoughts? It, it was... Oh, uh, okay. You were coming out. The truth coming out. What truth? Oh, okay. I was never... I was okay. never... The minister responsible oh. for housing but during my time. Your no, no, no. You're not here to that you were responsible for that. They, 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 in my area, they were my... Con- they were, there, was, there was my idea. They were in my area. I must have to... No, to, you were more than, you were fully responsible. But, no, but, that's, but, that's, but that's not how government works. That's oh, not okay. how government works, right? Government have responsibilities and oh. have allocated portfolios, right? So that's, oh, that's, okay. not, that's okay. not necessary. Okay. No, I'm not going to cut him off. I'm not going to cut him off. He has his say yeah, on straight up. No. no, no, but... Uh, but uh, you, I mean, you, you, have, you haven't reached that stage as yet. You haven't reached that stage yet, right? Okay. Because remember when you're in the street... So when you're saying cut me up, I'm going here. That is true. Anyway, anything else? Okay. And the other thing, Patches, again, 
you breach internet airport security rules that is that lie to the country. Well, here's here's what here's but what we're going to do. People up to now have not pulled back of your case. Here's what. Here's how we're going to do it. Here's, 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 here's what we're going to do it. This is your second call of the night, okay? And no, no you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, right, fine. This is your second call yeah, of the night. night. And next time you call back, make certain you deal with this, with this, with the topic. Yes, I, I know you want me to cut him off. That is not my style on straight talk. I've given him an opportunity. He had two opportunities. The next time he calls, I would anticipate and I will direct him to speak to our issue tonight. And our issue tonight relates to the topic which I said and I said I fully support I fully support governance bills and I support as well my straight dog family I also support as well ethical standards and I raise the matter I raise the issues and we are not going to dist be distracted and we are not going to get into any arguments for so whatever is the motive that won't work with me because as i said i said before that to manage public resources effectively and efficiently governments need strong governance and a robust public financial management system so that the use of resources is tracked and that resources are appropriately allocated against public policy objectives. I said governments must endeavor to achieve the most with the resources they have, maximizing efficiencies in public service delivery while minimizing loss through waste, fraud, or corruption. To enhance government's accountability for decision-making, high levels of uh, transparency are required. Let's go back to the lines. Uh, caller, uh, you are live. Hello, caller. Mr. Street, good evening. How are you, my brother? Good evening. How is what the... can I say so far so good? So... All is well, and you? I am peaceful. I am peaceful, my brother. Guy, you have to be peaceful. Mr. Street, don't let nobody rob your joy. <laughs> be <laughs> strong at all times because you know who is out there supporting you and who is out there not supporting you. So you don't <laughs> have to be here. Of course, of you course. You don't have to be up. Of course, my brother. When your enemy comes to Trump over you, what you do? You stand on God words and you stand and say, Guy, no, it's okay. It's okay. You say what you got to say, but you're going to hear me. That's and good. he can't hear you. You let him just go on. Because yes. he going to don't know. He going to bang up his traps until he's trapped. Yeah, when he tell you, so you know what about you know what about them things that Mr. Street that you just <laughs> do you do as a good man's are. Understand? Yes. So you are doing very well. So you don't worry. Don't worry, Mr. Shooter. Just take care of yourself. Do as a good man does. <laughs> All I want you to do is to grab the Attorney General and do what you have to do. Now we hear the second part. That was the first part. All so right. we are waiting for the second chapter to turn. Okay, my All right, Mr. Theater. See you when I see you. Be good. <laughs> I'll see you when I see you. Yes, my brother. Good to hear you as <laughs> usual. Thanks a lot for oh. your contribution. We go back to the lines, and I thank this caller for holding. Call you live. Good night, Dr. Ian Patches. How is my brother culture? Tonight. Oh my God, it's fine, man. I'm fine. Always good because to Because you know what happened? You know what happened, Patches? No. God is in control of the world. True, true. Jehovah God. And it doesn't matter where man may bob and weave and duck and run, they got to stand up. When God says stand up there, stand up there. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a question. Let me begin this with Patches. I've already said. 54 
which is twice four um, persons has taken to the court for the um, the social security contribution. That is correct. Right now, there are 54 before okay. the court. Okay. Now, let me ask this question here, Padres. The LAW is the law of the land. Mm -hmm. And no man on earth is bigger than the law, is higher than the law. Mm -hmm. But it seems like the law has a try to be higher it. It's spelled law exception. So, the law is for only some, and the exception is for other people, like the Attorney General <laughs> who pay his contribution to the Social Security in um in, in pieces. In then let batches, me call it away. In batches, he said. Yes, right, in batches. <laughs> so it seems like he alone carrying the exception of the law mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because everybody they did not pay the contribution when they're supposed to pay. It. And that's the reason why 54 of them is before the court. Now, I am saying this. If it was our Attorney General when Team Unity was the administration, if it was our Attorney General did that, we all know if you take one individual to walk down Fort Street to protest and demonstrate with placard, such individual will have been down there. Such individual. But you see, it seems like we only have a, what you call a three-day syndrome. We talk about one thing for three days and then he like we forget it. The Attorney General, he swear to Almighty, Almighty God that he will do, he will do what the, the, um, the person who swear him in, tell him to repeat and say. He will do justice. It's all. And he do something else different to what he said. Something else. He swear with the Bible in his hand. And then in the end he says, so help me God. Mm -hmm. Which one the God is he speaking to? Because, so help me God. When people make an oath and they call God a minute, they, and, and they ain't going to do what they said. They blaspheme in the name of God. And he not supposed to be According to the law that he has broken, he's not supposed to be in parliament. No way. Under the first national hero, Mr. Robert Bracho, Mr. Bracho will have done something what he has to do. Because Mr. Bracho will let him know definitely, you're supposed to show the biggest example because you are the first person under the law, after the law. And if you going to demonstrate such a disrespect for the law, you have to step down out of your office. But you will come back on later on. Thank you much. That is not right. He's supposed, he's supposed to be, he's supposed to be like the others because he, he has committed a crime by not paying his contribution to the Social Security. If you don't pay, how the Social Security going to go on? You know, that's the reason why those 54 persons are before the court. Because they refuse to, to comply with the social security rules and regulation. I'll be back, Patches. Thank you very much for your intervention. My, <laughs> my, my brother, um, I submit that we have a lasting... We, we, want, we have to make a lasting change in our federation. We need to focus on cultural change. And very simple, based on wrong and right. Wrong and right. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Don't come to make no stupid excuses about your paying batches. Paying what batches? So the court judge a judgment, a decision is wrong? No, it's right. It's steep in the law. It's based on the social security laws. And section 37 of the law 
says no matter what, uh, uh, sorry, uh, section 45 of the Social Security Act says any insured person or employer who fails to pay at or within the time prescribed for the purpose of any contribution which he or she is liable under this act to pay shall for each such failure on summary conviction to a fine not exceeding $200 or to imprisonment for a term not exceeding six months or to both. That's what the act says. And in addition shall incur a penalty not exceeding $100 and not less than $20 for every day during which such failure continues beyond six months. That's the law. Why you want to, to change the law or avoid talking about the law? The law is the law. You must abide by the laws. We are a country of laws. Dr. Drew reads this email. It is so easy for us forgetting where we came from after obtaining an education that enabled very significant and prestigious jobs for us today. You and I came out of, an, of abject poverty, so do not join with those who could not be seen with us yesterday because we were considered scrums of the earth. But all of a sudden today, they are touting the prime minister is my friend and he gave me a job to do and I'm going to do it for I am not afraid of anybody. Ha ha, what a joke, continues this email. Dr. Drew, do not lose your common touch with your people. For those who scorned you yesterday, ask Earl Clark, Nigel Carty, and Austin Edinburgh about the haves and have not in not society in St. Kitts. Let's go back to the lines. Caller, good night. You are live. It's 919. Greetings and love. How are you, my brother? Ras, I, I give him thanks. How are you doing, brother Patty? I am peaceful, my brother. Peaceful. Trust me. Give thanks and good night to your listeners for the radio internet. Now, I just hear we have some indication about the Social Security Act and your outline and the competition of how the AD behavior has displayed to what the Act has said. Well, let me ask something here. Well, if that was me and I didn't pay no money to a con consent of my company, I'm not pay for my workers, then won't I be in prison? Of course. Many have gone to prison. How can you be in prison? Well, I guess he's, he's, he's from the privileged few. I almost want to say perhaps he's a Wilkin. I mean, I ain't a Wilkin, I ain't a Wilkin, you know. I ain't just the system here, man. That's a mistake. I adjust the system need to really change totally because it's unstable. It's unstable. You imagine to tell me a lot is waiting from the eyes of 40 something thousand people and not one of I and I people have able to agitate to see that this attorney general really faced what he needs to be facing. That means resign and face the penalty that you're supposed to be facing as you either face jail time. Or you pay up all what you have to own, not by not batch. Pay them up all together, but you see, well, time well, longer than twenty. As they always say to the parties, as well, he white has, man he has, he has paid up. Me I mean, want no more. He has paid up. I just say, white man justice, black man grieve. That was something we had indicated in two thousand six when we know when our Ella and Bubba were facing extradition and seeing the injustice we were facing against those subverging in the time of the execution of the extradition. And when you look at it, see what happened after? The, 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 the last stand of defense, here comes the old chief in DA, come in the wee hour of the night and take them out of the cell and escort them up to the airport and then fly them out. It's an injustice system you are living on. That's why these cooks could do what they could do. That's why we not trust no member of no Freemason. He's a fireball and a Mason member. Have a blessed night. Have a blessed night, my uh, dear brother, Ras Aya, 
always assertive, always outspoken, never afraid to speak his mind. And you asked the question, and some time ago, a few years ago in Parliament, uh, Nigel Carty had this to say, and I reflected on his comments most recently when Nigel Carty said this. These are not the days 20 years ago, 30 years ago, when only Charles Wilkins and a few people who look like him were lawyers in the country. And when Carty made that statement, you know, I, I started thinking and I, I reflected on the statement uh, a few weeks ago when I had the gag order placed on me. And like I said, I have sought to move to get some guidance from the Bar Association. I moved to get some guidance from the Bar Association because this shouldn't just stop like that. The AG is not like you and me, no matter what they say. Whatever name they call had security. The Attorney General is the leader of the Bar Association. He is the principal or chief legal advisor of our government. He can't be treated the same way. Of course not. He cannot be. So don't tell me he paid in batches and that's good. He paid already. And that's the issue I have with the persons. And they have a right to speak. They have a right to a view. But they must speak the truth. Minister Marsha Henderson, I am calling on you again to fix the main road in Sprott Street. It is getting worse. Don't you drive anymore on that street, Marsha. Come on, man, reads this email. My friend Marsha, you've been called upon to fix that road. Good evening, sir. It seems that residents of number seven are being discriminated against. A single mother with three or four children was denied the PAP without any explanation. The Jew administration, uh, reads this email, made promises to the healthcare workers which are not being fulfilled. If you look into the manifesto, you'll see where it, it, it says they would give an increase in the first six months. It's over six months now. They also promised to increase weekly workers' wages to $500 per, per week. To date, nothing reads that email. Caller, thank you for holding your life. Hello, Carlo. Okay. Are you there, Carlo? Okay, I seem to have lost that caller. Uh, let's take this other email. Caller, uh, you can call back. I'm, I'm sorry. I had you on hold for uh, a moment. But again, the numbers 646 829 6672 or locally 663. Six six seven two. Let's dispense of the emails that are building up. And someone sent me some clips. I really thought I had downloaded uh, that one when the even the prime minister himself was saying that the the government broke the social security law. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm so sorry I couldn't get that downloaded. Uh, but let's go back to the lines. Meanwhile, a uh, caller you live. <coughs> Hello, caller. Caught up, my beloved brother. Greetings in the name of our great African ancestors, especially King Garby and Queen Enzinga. How are you, my beloved brother? My brother, I am much better. Now I'm here, my brother <laughs> Nabu. How are you? I trust you are well. I'm good, man. I'm good. And the clan is good, beloved. Man, I was wondering what happened. You know, I didn't hear you and that. 
the white boy raised his fist, and then I made some contacts, and then one of my brothers said, he had some problem with one of them boys, you know? <laughs> yes, beloved, beloved, let me say, <laughs> what is going on with that mulatto boy? But uh, he's atrocious, because if that was an African person with a brother or sister, the so-called bar association really don't call for his head or her head. And they let, they let revoke their license or they suspend them or despise them outright. What happened to our people, majority of our people in, in Leo Media and Owali? Why? They don't have that African warrior or warriorsness anymore. Come on. We have to stand up for what is right and do the right thing at all times and say the right thing at all times. But uh, it's a shame and a disgrace that a few people of the Caucasian ilk, beloved, that they, you know, this nonsense still prevail in 2023 and that can be right. In a country where 98, 97% are the people of African peoples, no, man, but uh, what is wrong with some, with some African people? What is wrong, beloved brother? brother? And you need to push. Like I said, I listened to you, uh, I think it was, and uh, you know, not live, but I hear a couple of things with you when they had the gaga on you and everything. Brother, <laughs> we must stand up, beloved. We, have we to. must stand up. We have to. It's a shame and a disgrace and a dishonor to our African ancestors and the few elders that stand up, the few Pan-Africanists that are still around in the physical. It's a shame and a disgrace and a dishonor. Come on, man. We can't go back to them old-time colonialistic days. No, man. We got to stand up as true Africans, beloved brother. Brother, you and I will always be with you, beloved. So, brother, you don't have to hold it. You know, I was on a different mission in, in Walatli, <laughs> beloved. So, that's why, man. So, okay. I am here again, beloved brother. And just let me shout out all the two Africans in Liamiga and Owali. Just keep on, keep on. No retreat, no surrender. And Pan Africanism, Pan Africanism yesterday, Pan Africanism today, and Pan Africanism forever. Beloved brother, keep up the great works. Pan Africanism, our parish. One love, my beloved brother. One love, my brother. Good to hear you. Good to hear you. Yes, Trust beloved. You. Nice to hear. You. That's my brother Nabu from there in New York. Let's go back to the lines. I call you live. Mr. Ian Patrick Leiber, greetings, brother. How are you? I am peaceful, my brother. Uh, the reciprocal greetings to you. I, I will now sit up, listen, because your contributions are always so influential and so affluent. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Good governance bill, ethical standard. And could you continue on this very important topic? You know why, why this topic is so important? Because the Attorney General is not an elected politician. That's what makes it so important. And he's a ch the chief advisor to the government. So whatever he does, it reflects on the country and it's also reflects from the government. So it's good that you continue this topic is not is not a bashing because it's about education. Because you see, when the serious issue I pay attention to is the injunction. And listening it the, the, the tape they put in like concerning the attorney general and the expression that he gave. When you know and hear the powers of an injunction, 
I remember the word here on the boundaries case. And at the time, the opposition then had realized what it would have been if the boundaries had got through and they filed an injunction to prevent that from happening. And here is it now. Because this injunction now, we're getting so much exposure of what was the meat of the top issue. And the same as though the Attorney General was the one who more know about the meat of the issue, so he filed an injunction. Now, here, here in the meat of the issue now, and looking at the move from the person, we really have to question those kind of movements because you, you're in charge of the country and here it, you don't want the public to hear certain things which is not bad it's something good and you're stopping the public from hearing it so what could, what else would you do in a position with such a position? It's a, it's a very serious issue. And sure. not, not only that, the government would have cases and here uh, is the entity over the peninsula. You hear court house, the court case with National Bank, etc. And he may have to represent the government. So what about the morals standing over his head? Mm -hmm. And you see, an issue like this, must pay attention to, otherwise you'd be like a dark cloud hanging over the country because he's the chief advisor. Sure. And when you make a move with an injunction, that's a powerful tool you know, in law. And when you make a move like that and you end up failing, that procedure is part of and so Mr. Patches, you continue to stay strong and stay healthy. I don't see this is no party political vendetta because he's not an elected politician. As he say, he was given a job and taxpayers are responsible for the payment of the job. You take care and have a good night. Thank you very much. You take care of yourself as well, my dear brother. Yes, it's not, according to you, a party political vendetta because he's unelected, perhaps unelectable as well. Uh, but the fact is, it's, it's simply about right or wrong. Right now, the Attorney General is embattled. What can he do? He brought the issue. He bossed himself. But this message reads, uh, let me dispense of these emails again. Hi, Patches. I have listened to you rehashing the Section 45 of the Social Security Law. I have listened very carefully. Are you aware that each contribution he didn't pay by the prescribed deadline is a separate criminal offense? Oh, yes, I'm aware. Based on my calculation... The Attorney General has committed about two dozen criminal offenses over the 26th month period. He refused to comply with the law, reads this email. This email reads, Patches, hello. Two points I wish to make. Straight Talk is still being boycotted by the Win FM and the Wilkin family. That's a question being asked. Is Straight Talk still being boycotted by the Win FM and the Wilkin family? Did you hear A.G. Wilkin taking or talking recently to Marisha about personal administrative inefficiency? This is how Garth explains 21 or 22 months of late payments to Social Security. That is a, a gobbledygook patches and it is to confuse the average person away from the fact that he deducted the money and held on to it held on to it it was a willful and deliberate act by mr wilkin 
but personal administrative inefficiency didn't stop him from paying it into Social Security when time came for him to navigate the benefits of public office positions such as President of the Bar Association or the Attorney General. Privilege and entitlement is alive and well in St. Kitts. Reads this email. It's 9.37. This other email reads, Good night, Mr. Lyburn. Personal inefficiencies sound like a joke. Based on the explanation given by Pompous Garth Wilkin for breaching social security laws. Patches, ignorance is no excuse for the law. I will go on to say recklessness is also no excuse for the law. Garth Wilkin needs to do the honorable thing in the interest of the country and step away from being the AG for St. Kitts and Nevis. If Garth Wilkin is forgiven for committing this crime against Social Security and, and the lady, then the 54 people who are currently facing prosecution should be pardoned as well. Reads this email. This other email uh, reads, Patches, good evening to you once again. Until something is done, once the Lord permits me to, I'll be here with you. Still no show at the ICT department from the Honorable Conris Maynard and still no solution from Dr. Drew. Staff are there still suffering under the hands of Conris's auntie. Now, Patches, imagine we are hearing that her contract is about to end and Conris and Drew wants to keep her around to continue the frustration of that department. Well, Patches, the staff, they are hoping that this is not so. Otherwise, Conris's auntie and Drew and Conris will get the wrath of the staff once her contract is renewed. I am warning Con Conris and Drew to make not to make that terrible mistake ever again, like what Akila and Timothy did last year. His auntie must go and she needs to go now. Read this email. Caller, thank you for holding your life. Hello, good night, I'm back with all you. I am peaceful, my brother yourself. Ah, I'm peaceful, my brother. I'm peaceful, living all time. Um, I am I'm listening and I know tonight the topic is relating to the issue of the government. Yes. And I there's not not much that I'd want to say on the topic in that I mean it is it is clear. You're either for good governance or you're or you're not for good governance. Sure. Yes. You are allow um the the bourgeoisie and those who are in in, in essence from the, the class of the bourgeoisie to, to trump to trump upon the laws of the land. And when that happens it means that the proletariat, the workers, are often being sacrificed at, at the at the mercy of those who are in, in such bourgeoisie. The other point I want to make is in relation to your observation in review. And this is in relation to the injunction that was filed today, that was accepted today in the court, and will now proceed to the High Court. I believe that the officials in Nevis made an error. Had they, and you being a former United Nations ambassador would understand, but under the International Maritime Organization Law, Conventions actually, which independently became a signatory in 2001, yeah? that under such law, under such convention, if it is that a vessel is in distress or is, um, is in, in, in need of help, that it is incumbent upon such member states to provide that help. I think what should have happened was that the, that the police officers should have, in, in fact, contacted the appropriate authority for maritime, um, for maritime affairs in the, in the country and then seek to grant persons some help, seeing that the attorney doesn't them. The same was that they're in fact going on their way to send Martin to do shopping, and they just nearly won, nearly um, um, suffered damage to their vessels, 
anyways of you know we need to could repair that. So we now have a scenario where had that at that begin, we would not be here today. Well, based upon what the attorney has said. Now I I I know that is not this has the potential of being a landmark case. And it is very I am waiting to see what will become the outcome of it. Because also it 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 can have dire implications for member states of CARICOM that they are allowed to their six months passing in census. Then this will be um and this will be very, very, very a very game changing um piece of ruling. There's also another observation I have coming out of this case, and that I want to to warn the current administration that the, there's a potential for also another constitutional case coming before the court, and this is in relation to the matter of citizenship. In relation to that, you know where Section 62. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm, if I'm incorrect, um, Ambassador, uh -huh. that the section that deals with citizenship of the Constitution um, clearly states that citizenship is given under certain criteria. I note with interest and even with um, pre um, trepidation that the current Minister of National Security, and who, who, who um, apparently is not, who's also the current Minister, has made some statements in regard to marriages that he believes to be sham marriages. Previously, before 2015, the, or 2018, I may say, persons were given prescriptions in terms of what he needed to do to become citizens, even though it was against the Constitution. It clearly states that upon marriage, or upon other circumstances, whether your mother was born here, your father was born here, your grandmother was born here, that that was granted to you. So I want to say, to say that the approach that I'm seeing happening now, the government is making itself uh, very vulnerable for legal action because it seems what is happening is that even though in 2018 a decision was taken by the then administration to say, let us do away with this, Three years requirement, and also with this requirement for presenting uh, whether we, whether it was to, to be tested for AIDS and syphilis and other diseases as well, and that that was done. But what is happening now, and I'm gathering this from some from persons who I've had some discussions with, particularly in the Latin, um, the, 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 the the Spanish speaking community, that what is happening now is that they are being told that you you have to wait three years. But that is not within the Constitution. And so I'm urging the government to urgently look at this because you may, be, you may have a case or a, a scenario where, you're, where there can be a case brought forward and then that can become a game change in case similar to what will happen in this matter with the Asians. So I, I don't know, Ambassador, but correct me if I'm wrong. This is how I'm reasoning. And so tell me if my, my, my reason is 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 sensible, you know. Well, that's why you have uh, that's why you have the separation of powers, you know. Uh, your, your equipment or something is on there, uh, but you you have the 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 judiciary that would interpret the laws passed by the legislative, right? Yeah, and and that that so it's, it's an independence there, and the, the landmark case, or, or, or rather this. You have your, your your equipment or something on. So I'm getting I'm getting the feedback there. This is on my this on my in-house lawyer for uh, social security patches. You know this wicked and selfish government who don't want to give the people the pap money. Read this email. The pap money they promised them during the elections. Uh, during the elections has also taken away the food vouchers from the poor and needy in this country. Yes, the little groceries some people were getting from Rams and other supermarkets have been stopped. 
What a wicked and heartless government we have in this country. Everyone should realize by now that they just don't care about poor people in this country. I wonder how Jeffrey Hanley and his gang sleeps at night. Reads this email. Let me take this other email, caller. Thank you for holding. Uh, uh, tell him, ask Drew about the passport situation. All know Drew still dancing around and farming the fool. Drew, why so many vat on food to say you love poor people? How? What about Christopher Harbour? From since Drew in power, is a dark cloud of deception hanging over the Federation. What took place at the hospital the other night? Labor reminds me of Beres' song, Sweet Lies. I uh, read this other email. And Patches questioned the new smart, the new smart question, the new smart hospital that is coming on stream by Dr. Drew. Is it going to make four hospitals in St. Kitts or the present JNF hospital will still be there or will it be demolished or whatever? Thank you. Uh, I think I heard them mention something about uh, that hospital. Good night, Mr. Patches. Once again, another good show tonight. I admire you allowing everyone to call in and have free expression on any issue that is being discussed. Your tolerance tonight is outstanding. Thank you for not entertaining fools who don't want to abide by the topic that is being discussed. You are the host of your show. You set your rules and everyone should abide by them. Continue to keep your topic and hold everyone to the same. Do not be deterred by anyone who wants to push you off track or off your topic. Keep presenting the facts because that's the conviction that's making some people rat rattle and it's also what the audience want to hear those who are not for you and are not happy when the truth is presented to the world again great show do not apologize or take anything back that you can show proof of stay strong many supporters are willing and able to help hold your hands up when needed great to hear you culture on air again let's go back to the lines thanks for that support uh, caller I want to thank you for being yes, here live. Okay, Patches, good night. Culture is back here again. Call I'm the culture. Call the, I almost, <laughs> say, I almost <laughs> said call the devil that he'll pay, but I know you're not a devil. Let me take that back. <laughs> man, man, you could call me anything, man. I was a devil on me, boy, in the park. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, no, uh, let me, let me, let me draw a little illustration about certain things. Now, Patches, we all know the height of the Twin Towers when they were up in the air, in New York. Now just imagine if the people who constructed the Twin Towers never decided to go up more than one floor and they had to lengthen out those buildings. We know the amount of acres of land those two buildings would have taken up. But they use wisdom and they use the space that they have in the air until some idiot come and blow them down. Now saying that to say this, when the Prime Minister decided that he wanted to build a new hospital and he's a smart hospital, here when he excused that we know the climate change, a lot of, lot of disasters happening to the climate change. So, because the hospital going to name a smart hospital, climate change cannot affect it. <laughs> and see where he want to go all the way down there by West Farm. Nothing is wrong with Joseph and France Hospital. Nothing is wrong with it except the behavior and the conduct of some and a small number of people working at the hospital. I'm not going to pick out who and who. But in any organization, you have more than more than three persons, all three. I mean, I mean, I mean, all of them not gonna be on the same accord with the rules and regulation. So the reason why I'm talking about the hospital, Patrick. Now, 
the hospital up there, the old existing hospital, it has a solid, solid foundation footing. I know what I'm talking about because I saw it built. And we have enough space in the back, which is not of the old existing hospital, to extend, break down the, the, the flat roof one that Mr. Bratto built. Break down that one behind the, the existing roof. And then construct additional extension to the one which you call a state of the art. Mm -hmm. Why you want to can them up there? Nothing is wrong with it. But to go down there to build one hospital down there, I guess maybe there are some long pockets in the government. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's the reason why they want, they want to call it a, a smart hospital. Nothing is wrong. Mm -hmm. Dubai, we know, is smaller than St. Kitts. And Dubai has one of the tallest buildings in that area. And the people who, who build it, they use the wisdom and they go up in here because B B Dubai cannot hold what they want to put out down there. So our building, them can go up. The one that exists there now, the new one that they built 2000 or 2002. All he has to do is to go up one or two more floor on that and with behind. But one the thing he want, he want to say he doing things different to our former Prime Minister, Dr. Harris. Look at the school. Look at the school, the land up there already prepared the new land to build the school. And if you're gonna talk about climate change, could it could affect the hospital and down there the new one, that to me the climate change. It will happen to those two wooden building up tailors where they have the high school in. Climate change cannot affect those. If he, if, if he mean what he said, then he should have gone ahead and started a new school. And boy, no, the blocks will have been high up in the air already. Because the amount of people that was employed up there, that building would have almost complete, and then they would have had to put in the, 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 um, the internal patch inside of it. But he wanted to say he's doing, doing things different, and to break down that old grammar school, he's going to cost more than if he had to go and construct a new one. Anyway, patches. We want to stand up and show your Tony, um, Dr. Joe, the Prime Minister, he cannot allow a blabbereco to go in the Parliament to say he's making laws. The same laws where he broken? Come on. Come on. Who are you talking to? Sensible people. Not because a lot of people don't call in. Chinkis has a lot of educated, educated people. And they are waiting until the right moment to do what they have to do. I got something for you next week, Patrick. I'll see you tomorrow. I mean, I mean, Thursday. <laughs> tomorrow. Tomorrow. It's Monday, yes. <laughs> Tomorrow's Tuesday, sorry. <laughs> sorry Tomorrow's about that, Tuesday. Man. Tomorrow, you confused me. Thanks a lot for your input. Yeah, okay. Uh, my have brother. a good night. And uh, uh, just to let you know that Dubai, though, Dubai is... Uh, it's umpteen times the size of St. Kitts that I know, though. It's, uh, I know. It's it's desert. That's the only uh, drawback. Uh, but it's... Uh, my, my maths is my strongest weak point. So I know it's it's almost... Let me see how I get it. Well, 50 times, maybe more, uh, uh, the size of St. Kitts. So that if I, I remember reading something. It's well over 4,000... Uh, square miles, I believe. I stand to be corrected. Patches, why does Garth Wilkin take us for fools? Read this email. The Social Security law does not permit anyone to pay contributions in batches. Most nights I pray that Drew gets some courage and fires Garth Wilkin. And if he doesn't, then please allow Denzel to step up and send him back to private practice. We need a new AG. Read this email. This other email patches. Good night. I am a single mother of two of twin boys, beg your pardon, from Monk Hill, St. Peter. I am papless and stepless under this wicked labor government. But God will provide with this email. Let us go back to the lines uh, at at 
couple of minutes before 10 o'clock. I'm winding down, but call your life. Go back to the line. Hello, Carlo. Good, good, good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Um, I'm listening to you. I'm a long time listener, but first time caller. Thank you. But the thing is, and I heard I heard the gentleman talk about the hospital. Where Dr. Drew put in the hospital is one of the most intelligent places to put the hospital. Stinkis is the only place in the intelligent world where you have a hospital in the flight path. Most, most crashes on, on aircraft, they crash during takeoff and landing. So if a plane is coming in and it has problems, any crash is going to drop on the hospital. So who's going to take care of the injured when the hospital is in fire? And secondly, when the wind shift and you have to you have to come from the opposite direction, those those jet planes are going to be co- coming right over the hospital. The engine engines full blast. You have patients in the hospital with heart conditions. And the sudden noise from the air could upset this patient. So that we, so when the doctor just trying to put the hospital down by, down by the, down by a rush university. It's an intelligent decision. It is not a popular decision. But it is still an intelligent one. Uh, you have to understand what happens, what, what you're building. Now, we, really old hospital, the class, which why. We're in college, that was an ideal place to put the hospital, but they could not, because they used the funds to build the, to build the college, they could not divert those funds and build a hospital. I understand it. Sure. So what we have to do, we have to look at making an intelligent decision, not an emotional one. So you, so and as such... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, so you, you're you saying ahead. that, that the, the option to to relocate it is a, a good one because it's an intelligent one intelligent because one, because okay. because most most people don't realize when a plane is going to crash it's going to crash during takeoff or landing and, and in each case you can't have the aircraft coming over the hospital because that's the very facility you're going to need to take care of the injured am i making sense to you well, you make sense, uh, yes, but there are lots of airports. If you, I uh, don't know where you're calling from uh, in the US. The, the, the I'm, I'm, of, I'm, call, I'm calling from from Cincinnati. Uh, well, I but, but where I'm saying, to, but the, lots of the have, airports, the the, the aircraft <clears throat> uh, coming over over residential areas. I'm not saying you you. I'm trying to justify it, but you know, I'm. Yes, yes, yes. They do come in over residential areas, yeah. but they do not come come in over a hospital. Okay, okay. Or oh, the hospital makes it. And that's that's the okay. key, that's the key that if something goes wrong, you don't want the plane to crash at the hospital yard okay. because then then you can't take care of the sick because you got you got to turn the to those who are already in the hospital. So those who are injured by the by the crash, you have no place to put them. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's why you have to try and move. The hospital away from the flight path. So either put it somewhere up, either put it somewhere up um, near, near, near the, the, uh, the, the, the Eastern Caribbean Country Authority, mm-hmm. Central Bank, mm-hmm. or, you, or you put it down at West Farm. Either way, it be within close proximity to the airport, okay. but you're not in line with the airport, and that's, what's, that, that's, that's the option to have. Okay. So in my in, in, in my in my humble opinion, he's making a very intelligent decision. Well, that's what straight talk is all about. I'm 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 I'm, I'm not at variance with you because I, I haven't heard that that perspective before, uh, in terms of the flight path, right? So I'm, I'm I I don't like to talk from a point of ignorance myself, but I, I I think it's 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 a proposition that one has to consider and consider highly. But uh, that's what straight talk. Yeah, I mean, is about. I, I'm, I, I've traveled to several countries. Uh-huh. No country I've been to has the hospital been in the flight path. It might be near the airport, but never in the flight path. Uh-huh. Even for the week, I had a lot, lot of hospitals close to the airport. None of those hospitals are in line with the airport. They might be near. They might be near the airport, but they're not in line with the, with the flight path. And that's what you have to look at. When you're coming in, you're flying right over Jane France, and that is not safe. 
You, you know, because as, mm. as circuits improve, we're going to get bigger jets. We're going to get more sophisticated aircraft. And there are a number of things can go wrong. And when they do go wrong, that's where it's going to be, right in the flight path. Anyway, thanks for the time. And I hope that um, that the cabinet who, who listened, that they would support Dr. Drew in his proposal. And not listen to the other people who, who hadn't thought of it that way. Okay. But they, but trying to put the hospital down near West Palm is an intelligent decision. Okay, uh, thank and you. And good night, sir. And, and, and thank you for giving me the time. My pleasure, and thanks for calling. Hope it won't be your last time, uh, first time, but uh, take care. And we do welcome uh, our different, our various views. Uh, someone reacted, Patches, Mr. Bradshaw had a policy that no aircraft should fly over the hospital. Uh, and this other message reads, Hi, Patches, good night. The site selected for the new hospital is in a tsunami zone. Uh, also, what is the sense of building near all the rust, donkeys, goats, and sheep? Right, <laughs> this is other email. So uh, that's getting that particular uh, reaction. Uh, Carlo, uh, you're live. Hello, Carlo. Hello, Carlo. Are you there, Carlo? Yes, Carlo, you're live. Hello? Okay, this, okay, this caller is not responding. So, yes, you're live, If Carlo. you go down by Ross University, right? Mm -hmm. And you stand and look at when the plane is coming in, mm -hmm. nobody plane could be landing over where the hospital on the bill. That, that, them colleges know what they're talking about. No, that's, that's, not, that's, that's, that's not what he was saying. He was no, saying... No, hear me, Patrick. Hear me for a second. No, 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 you no, what, what I'm saying. But you misunderstood what he said. Please, please, please. Yeah, what he said? He said that the he current the hospital, hospital the, the, exist, path. the existing hospital, he said, is in the flight path. Yeah. The other one at, at Ross University area is an intelligent uh, option, he said. No, but, but, but Patches, hear me again, hear me again. If you go in Tigo, with the plane in the past. Over the hospital? They don't. Exactly. They if don't. you go London, London City Hospital, with the plane in the past. So I can give them all kinds of foolish ideas. I mean, come on, buddy, bread, bread. tell me what I should put up the same boy need this. Patches, this was the hospital be for years. The original one. Have you ever had an issue with it? There was ever, ever a problem? But when we go to other countries, we see the same thing. We always try to jump down with one thing, you know. And I'm happy that you tell him that all over the world, you got the hospital, you're putting in the same area. He talking about planes. Have you ever had a plane crash here, Patches? You have any issue with any plane? Okay. okay. But, I, 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 yeah, but, but, is it, but he's entitled to that view, just like you're entitled to yours. I uh, understand that, Patches, yeah. but what I'm saying, let us not go negative. That's the middle of 100 years. And we never had an issue. I'm saying, when his suitors be like to call on the country, when he's living in Connecticut, playing on pass all over the place. Let me, let me. Take his only place who playing pass. Let me, let me ask you a question since you called back tonight, all right? Because uh, you haven't really touched the, the topic that we discussed tonight. So I, I want to ask you a question, right? Do you think that the Prime Minister Joe should fire the AG? Right? Do you think that Timothy should fire you? When you give the man in the battle in the park? <laughs> the, you, when he was yes. disrespectful to the box? <laughs> Let me ask you the other question then. Huh? After, oh, do you, you think, get patches? Do you believe that Dr. Douglas would have fired the AG? You believe that Douglas would have what? Fired the AG. If it was Dr. Douglas. Do you believe that Timothy would have fired you? For the intimidation about the, the, the airport, the support, <laughs> and breach international law. So, if you give me a vision for you, I can stop playing my brother. Have a good night, my brother. Have a good night, my brother. I can. I <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> That's very interesting. Patches, the Prime Minister said he's going to build a new hospital. I was wondering why, but no. But no. But no. But no. It's for the poor and needy in this country. Judging by the way he's treating them, for when you deprive 
The people from the basic needs like food, there's no other place they will end up but the hospital and maybe Springfield. Uh, as, as I'm winding down here uh, tonight, uh, <laughs> uh, you keep calling me Dr. Live, just say patches. What culture is saying is that in St. Kitts, it is time for the government and Dr. Jude to think about saving lands by building up high. Look at Park Hyatt that takes up lots of lands that should have been a high rise. JNF Hospital could be a high rise, at least four floors. Good. And perhaps that's the way we're going to end it tonight, my straight dog family, because I am long out of time. My time is done and I got to run. But that last caller uh, made me laugh. <laughs> very, very made me laugh, right? And I'm sorry to be laughing. But I, I, we, we spoke tonight about the governance bills. And I hasten to add, though, that I support, I said, rather, that I support, fully support, the governance, governance bills recently passed in the St. Kitts Nevis National Assembly. I hasten to add, though, that I fully support as well documented and agreed ethical standards. And when I say ethical standards, I refer to standards that are based on human principles, simple human principles of right and wrong. I'm aware However, that ethical standards do not have a legal basis, while legal standards are based strictly on what is written in law, my straight dog family. I made mention of, of uh, the late Martin Luther King Jr., who back in 1964, when he was asked whether he would wait until the culture was ready for civil rights legislation. His response is still instructive up to today. And he said, and I quote, even though morality cannot be legislated, behavior can be regulated. While the law cannot change the heart, he continued, it can certainly restrain the heartless. And my sweet dog family, the the recent decision of the Caribbean High Court in the case of the Attorney General Garth Lucian Wilkin versus yours truly reminds us, and someone made mention of the court, and I start, spoke about the separation of justice, but it reminds us that the rule of law is not some technical legal requirement that can be ignored by the powerful demagogues but by a complex living culture sustained by different actors internalizing a strong sense of their responsibility to uphold it. The decision of the court by Lady Tamara Gill, uh, her ladyship, beg your pardon, Tamara Gill, demonstrates this robustness of the OECS's rule of law institutions and the independence of the judiciary. The rule of law, in other words, is a living and breathing culture, a habit, and a state of mind embodied by public participation in our national life. From all historical accounts, following the demise of our first national hero, His Right Excellency Sir Robert Llewellyn Bradshaw, the rule of law was uprooted by short-sighted successor governments that set the rule of law aside for political advantage or political expediency. And this is my fundamental point all night. Democracy breaks down when public officials do not respect the law. And that is why the question looms large as to whether our Attorney General Garth Lucian Wilkin has the moral compass to guide us in areas of good governance, transparency, and accountability. He was castigated by the court, and instead of apologizing, he made excuses, 
stupid excuses, silly excuses like this one. He made an excuse like this one instead of apologizing to the country. And I take full responsibility for payment of social security contributions in batches and not always on time. There was a personal administrative inefficiency that led to the delayed payments. And when I really realized, I paid them. Personal administrative inefficiency. No intention to apologize to breaking the law. And yes, he paid in batches, three batches. Batch one, he paid November 2020 to March 2021. After he was elected president of the St. Kitts Nevis Bar Association on March the 31st. Batch two, my straight dog family. He paid for 15 months from May 2021 to August 2022. The day before he was sworn in as Attorney General on August the 13th, 2022. And his last batch, batch three, he paid for four months from September to December 2022. In January 2023, after being appointed Attorney General, he broke the law. And what forced him to pay that batch is still unknown to straight up. But how can we Forgive Attorney General Garth Lucian Wilkin. Give him a pass when he continues to be economic with the truth? Not at all, my straight dog family. We spoke earlier of the 45th anniversary of the Social Security Fund being celebrated under the theme Transform, Reform, Thrive, Social Security 45. The Minister for Social Security said his own government or the former government broke the law. Ironically, consultant Walter Gardner, who was retained by the Social Security Board, told his trainees of the Compliance Department about the secret to social security success. Here's what he said. Uh, good morning. My name is Walter Gardner. I'm a consultant, uh, project manager for the Turks and Caicos Islands Social Security Scheme. I'm here in the beautiful island of St. Kitts and Nevis, conducting some training for the compliance and inspectorate department. So I'm here for two weeks. The secret to Social Security success is that we all contribute. Everyone contributes in a timely manner in order for Social Security to be sustainable. All employers ensure that you pay the contributions for your employees on time because not to do so is a criminal offense. The Social Security Actuary, Derek Osborne, in the presence of the Minister with Responsibility for Social Security, Prime Minister Drew, warned that compliance makes the social security system works. Probably more importantly, I think, is the fact that we need to find a way to ensure that people who are supposed to pay only get a business license renewed or only get to drive taxi or get to be a doctor or lawyer in the private sector if they're compliant with Social Security, right? Checks and balances in place. If you don't pay on the right hand, you can't practice on the left hand, right? It happens in the U.S., it happens in Canada, it happens all over the international, all over the, the big countries. We need to find a way in the Caribbean to let the, the system speak to one another and let's make sure that, that everybody is compliant to make the system better. So the question I leave with you, my straight dog family, is there a special right, advantage, or immunity granted or available only to the privileged Attorney General and Minister of Justice and Legal Affairs? I told you, and I'll reconfirm. I have therefore communicated with the St. Kitts Nevis Bar Association to seek guidance on the correct procedure that should be followed given the importance of these matters to the law profession and the public at large. As most of these offenses occurred when the Attorney General was in fact the President of the St. Kitts Nevis 
Bar Association. I would have thought that the Bar Association itself should consider what actions are appropriate given the decision of the court. But if any action is dependent on a member of the bar or a private citizen, so it is, and it is in this context I solicited the guidance of the Bar Association. Good governance, or good governance, beg your pardon, in the public sector is fundamental to ensuring that public sector entities and officials achieve their intended outcomes while always acting in the public interest. Public sector spending can be susceptible to waste, fraud, and corruption. For those reasons, I must reiterate as I leave you tonight, my straight dog family, whether it is the integrity in public life, freedom of information, or anti-corruption legislation, I support the safe passage and implementation of them all, as I support as well governance, bills, and ethical standards. That's my story tonight, and I am not going to change it. I want to thank Almighty God for guiding our conversation tonight, and as always, I want to thank you, those who called, those who sent emails, the many of you on social media, Facebook and YouTube. Remember, you are the ones who make straight talk. And for that reason, I say a big, big thank you. I know many are missing the WinFM connection, but we will find a way around that because we are an intelligent people and we are, in fact, IT savvy as well. So until we connect on Thursday for another edition of Street Talk, be good to yourselves and all whom you meet. And remember, whatever you might conceive, that you will achieve. But first of all, my straight dog family, you got to believe. So when you wake in the morning, thank God for the morning light. Thank him for taking you to the night. And my straight dog family, keep moving on. Bye-bye. Until we connect on Thursday. <laughs>